Hello everyone, I'm Sophia. I'm a third year criminology student at the University of Bristol and a social media and marketing executive at Accommodation for Students and welcome back to our podcast. So for today's episode we're going to be talking all about student housemates, so finding who to live with, where you should start looking, when you should start looking and also making use of our new website studenthousemates.com. So let's get into it and introduce everyone. So first of all we have Rhiannon. Hi everybody, um, I'm Rhiannon, I am a marketing executive here at Accommodation for Students and I've just graduated from the Uni of York. Hi, I'm Anna, I am a communications and uh, marketing executive at Accommodation for Students and I also study English literature at the University of Bristol, um, currently in my second year. We have Toomey. Hi, I'm a second year student at Swansea University studying um, business management and I'm part of the marketing and content creation team at Accommodation for Students. We have Sasha. Hi, I'm Sasha. I'm a second year law student at Edinburgh and I work for the social media department for accommodation for students. And finally, we have Ellie. Hi, I'm Ellie. I am third year graphic design at Nottingham Trent University. Amazing. So now we've got to know the team, let's get straight into it. So Anna, why don't you kick us off by telling us how many people you currently live with and kind of like what's the dynamic like of the house? Uh, Yeah, so I'm actually in an all girls house. So there's seven of us and we're all girls, um, which has been pretty great. Uh, I really like it. I like living with all girls. I think we tend to be like a little bit cleaner maybe than men are. So like our kitchen and stuff is usually kept pretty nice. Um, And obviously like sometimes it gets a little bit bad, but we're all really good at like taking the bins out and like doing the washing up and stuff. So uh, yeah, house of seven, only girls. And what about everyone else who wants to chip in? Uh, I think I could chip in because I live with three guys. So it's, it's a very different dynamic because it's harder to clean and it's just it's not the vibe of how I would want to be living but have to just live with what I have I guess so yeah um my most recent student house I was in a house of five um it was a mixed house um so there were three girls including myself and two guys um but we'd all known each other since first year so it was quite a nice dynamic we're all in different courses we all sort of had our own things going on but we were still sort of friends um when we came together in the house in the evening i just live with two other girls so it's quite small and it's quite nice we all get along well and it's quite good we keep it quite clean because there's not as many of us so yeah two other girls I had the best of both worlds um i've lived on my own for a bit and i've also had four other flatmates um so I experienced a bit of both, but at the minute I've got four. Okay, cool. Well, yeah, I live with two other people, one girl, one boy. So yeah, being in a house of three makes things a little bit more manageable. So a lot of people might be in the process of finding housemates and a lot of people are probably wondering, well, where do I look? So why don't we talk about our experiences? So where did you find your housemate? So for me, one of my housemates was on my course so I actually found her obviously through my course and through our kind of whatsapp chat and then we were living with one of her friends and he dropped out of uni so recently I had to go through that process of kind of finding a new housemate again and we found him on Facebook but what was everyone else's experiences with finding their housemates? Mine was a bit I feel like a bit scary because I came from America and like I didn't really know what the culture was for houses like I didn't really know that you were meant to look for a house for second year like really early on at least for me everyone around me it was like October and everyone was like this is who I'm living with and I was like why are you deciding so early like we don't even know each other um so I kind of was really stressed about it and I hadn't really even like at that point figured out who I was really like close to and who I was friends with so I didn't really want to have to make the decision of like who I was going to live with for the rest you know for like the following year and it ended up that like really strangely it was like a friend of a friend um we were like sat next to each other at a pub and she was like oh I don't have anyone to live with and this was the first night I met her and I was like oh my god I've got no one to live with either and then we just lived together and like we had other friends that we like brought in and now we all get along really well but it was kind of strange because like I kind of chose to live with someone that I'd only met once versus is like everyone else around me but it worked out like for the better I don't know if I'd recommend it just because like I think I kind of just got lucky but it was really stressful I think just like finding people to live with I think it really sucks <laughs> I think for me it was it wasn't that hard to find some people to live with in second year because I had moved with a, a few of the people I had to stay with in first year so we just moved into like a four bed a smaller situation which I ended up with three guys and just me it was okay in a sense 
but it was just easy and they have to like find anyone essentially yeah I guess I was sort of in a similar situation um so all my housemates were people I already knew so in my first year I our flat like split off into three groups like four of them went and signed a house someone else in my flat actually bought a house and asked two of the guys from the flat if they wanted to join and then there was sort of the rest of us left and we we're like right let's live together we know what we like to live with um so we all went and signed a house together but yeah I was very overwhelmed like Anna said by like the the thought of having to live with people that I barely knew so I sort of went with people that I kind of had lived with already and um, which made me a lot more comfortable but I guess I kind of knew what I was getting myself in for living with my current flatmates there's so many ways you can meet people to live with yeah I met one of my housemates on my course and again I only had met her a couple times and then it was kind of similar to Anna it was like oh I don't have a house for next year she didn't we were like oh let's live together and then my other housemate was in my climbing sports club with me and that's why I think like joining committees joining clubs societies is such a good way to make friends and meet people to move in with we all we're all on the same course I met two of them during freshers week and then we all kind of introduced ourselves to each other um and we got to hang out a lot and get to know each other before we had to start looking for accommodation and I think looking back I'm really lucky I'm really glad that we had a a long time to get to know each other so obviously we've talked about who we live with but now we should start talking about when do you think people should start looking for their flatmates so Rianne what was your experience with that in my personal experience in York it's sort of one of the toughest cities there's two uh unis and like it's quite a small town so there's a lot of people looking for accommodation so I do think it's a little bit better to search a bit earlier in York so I I left it quite late I looked in sort of I kind of secured who I was living with in the January um, and by then there were just not a lot of houses left deciding who you're living with is a thing you have to do before you start looking for houses so I think the earlier the better like um again obviously you have to make sure that you're going to be able to live with these people it's a year of your life but I'd say sort of if I could have my time again I'd have sort of cured who I was living with by the end of November really obviously I survived with leaving it till January so again it depends and it depends the city you're in some cities are much more competitive than others yeah coming from Bristol I think that it gets very competitive here so the earlier you can secure who you live with definitely the better and I know it puts a lot of pressure on you as a student to kind of decide like yeah who am I going to live with for a whole year then when you think about it you can also think like oh it's just a year (laughs) so if it if it kind of doesn't work out like it's only one year and and you're kind of home for like most of it, not most of it, but you've got like three summer or like three months for summer where you're home. Um, we've got like three weeks off for Easter. So it won't be too bad. I feel like I'm making this sound really negative, but because like you can find people that you really like to live with as well. But I would definitely say like try to figure out as early as you can, just because it'll make your life so much easier <clears throat> when you have to like find a house. Yeah, I think I agree with Rihanna and Anna because better to find people before you start looking for houses so you can kind of like know who they are and you know what their ideas are and like what they are looking for in a house as well so you have the same idea of what you want and how you want to live and especially who they are so it's better to find houses find people sorry before you start finding your house I think it sounds a bit like cringe but you can't rush friendship I think it is quite hard because I wanted to live with people that I liked like really was good friends with I didn't make my two good friends until later on in second year and one of them had already booked a house and one of them wasn't sure if she was doing masters or not so I couldn't like live with either of them then I had to like find other people but it was quite hard because it was like didn't know them but at the same time it's like you get to know them and it's only a year And also, I quite like my own space anyway. So if I'm home, I will just stay in my room a lot. So you're not always talking with your other flatmates. So it doesn't particularly matter if you're best friends. It depends what type of person you are. Yeah, I kind of felt the same as Ellie in the sense that I really was like really nervous about moving in with the wrong people. Um, I'd say that if you do want to leave it a bit longer in Edinburgh it was okay to leave it until like January February we managed all right obviously in other cities it's like the house and market's a lot quicker if you do know roughly who you want to live with then it's probably best to do it as early as possible because you'll get the most choice I think like Anna said in Bristol and same with Rani in New York like the housing market is super competitive so when I was looking for my second year house you kind of already I lived with people who were in my flat in first year we kind of already knew that by the end of October 
Whereas when I was looking for my third year house, I was aware that there are always going to be houses available. And so I left it a little bit later and didn't sign until around December time. And I was in like this big group girl of six and it kind of just fell apart. And so I was just like, you know what, I'm going to go off and find my own housemates. And it was much easier. And to be honest, I probably spend more time at other people's houses or like out socializing anyway than my own house. So I think it really just depends on like we've all said what kind of a person you are and what kind of you want to get out of your house. So speaking of like trying to find housemates, what are some sort of things you should consider when you do decide who you want to live with? I think you should really think about like the routine of the people that you're living with, like how well do your lifestyles line up? So like I've lived with people who will go out, you know, six nights a week, stay in bed till midday. I won't see them because I'll be out at the gym or at uni by the time they even got up. Um, but then I also lived with someone who was a massive early riser. He would sort of get up at six, go for a run. He'd be, you know, cooking his breakfast at 8am. And I was like, you know, good for you, could never be me. Um, but like, again, you never see these people if you don't have the same routines and you don't, you're don't, you not able to bond. And I think sometimes it can become a point of contention if you know you're waking each other up at different times. So sort of knowing that you're going to be living with people where you sort of have similar sort of routines, you sort of you know, study at similar times of the day. Like you maybe would want to go to the gym together. You'd still maybe want to go on the odd night out together. Like just knowing that you'll be in quite a lot of harmony is quite important. Um, and one other thing that I considered just as a personal thing, I used to be a huge germaphobe. I have got better throughout uni, but I wanted to be with like clean people. And like I had flatmates and housemates who would just clean the kitchen without even being asked. And it was, it was lovely. Like our house was immaculate all the time. It was cleaner than my house at home. So that was like a really, I, when I was thinking about living with these people, I was like, well, I know my house will be immaculate. So I'm more than happy to live with these people. Yeah. I think there's a lot of little things that you kind of don't consider or like think about when you're, you're trying to figure out who you want to live with. There's like the obvious stuff like budget, which I think everyone would just kind of assume you want to be like on similar budgets, but then it's kind of stuff like, you know, some people don't like sharing pots and pans and plates. And some people think that everyone should just share their, their you know, their kitchen stuff. And that can really become like a point of arguments in the house. If some people think that we should be sharing spices and flour and other people think everyone should buy their own milk. Like, it's just little things like that that you should kind of consider. And then kind of Rhiannon was saying lifestyle, I think is definitely a big one. Because um, some people do like going out and going clubbing most nights of the week and that's fine but then if they leave like shot glasses everywhere and spilled vodka and it gets sticky and if that's not something that you enjoy and you like like it might be something to just consider and just not live with them because you don't like them as people but you know if it's just gonna make your year harder for uni so definitely like lifestyle and just kind of the little things like daily things um kind of see what's different and if you guys agree on stuff yeah I think you guys have like covered most of the stuff obviously there's the obvious sort of like budget and how you know you want bills included and no bills included and all the extra extra stuff at the same time yeah I do agree with what both of you have said so far I've got one where like think about if they're in relationships if they're single or not because when I I knew that one of my flatmates had a boyfriend and I just didn't clock it I didn't really think about it But now that I've moved in, he does stay around a lot. And I've mentioned it to them before, but they just don't really understand. Like, I don't appreciate particularly always having a guy around. He's very loud, so I hear him a lot. Um, So it's just something to consider because I signed up to live with like two girls, not two guys, two girls and a guy. So just, yeah, think about that. I think consider the location of the city that you all want to be in as well. Because for me, Edinburgh is like a city campus. So some of the buildings are kind of near the middle and then there's some that are two miles away so if you have someone that's like in one of those buildings they're obviously going to want to stay closer to there whereas if you're in the main campus you're going to want to live nearer to there Um, and then also like facilities and stuff like do you want to live near to a gym do you want to live near to like certain nightclubs or social places um so I think about that yeah I think you've all raised some really excellent points particularly like Ellie talking about the relationships thing like last year I was in a four bed girls house and we actually at times there would be eight of us in the house because we all had boyfriends around and it did become then like a very competitive fight for the kitchen and the bathroom and you've gone from sharing a space for four people to eight people 
Um, so I think that is something to really like establish. I always see it on Facebook groups as well, people asking for advice, being like, well, what's acceptable and what's reasonable? So I think that is something really key to consider. And it's the same with the routine thing. Like my housemates this year, I'm up every day at half seven, maybe not on the weekends, but in the week. And I quite like it because my other two flatmates don't get up maybe till like midday or so. So at least I know in the morning I can have the bathroom to myself, the kitchen and just get on. But then obviously with them getting up later, it means they're going to bed a lot later as well. So sometimes two, three in the morning, sleep gets disrupted. So these are really, really key things. And I think they're important things to discuss. And sometimes you just don't find these things out until you start living with people. And I think in your second year, you can then make that decision of whether or not that's right for you for third year or onwards. But if you're in your last year, you just have to get on with it I do have one last thing to add as well um I think obviously this is like definitely a personal thing but I if you're in a relationship I feel like maybe I think don't live with them while you're at uni I think it's just like a, like you're just asking for trouble at that point because you just never know what's going to happen um and also like you have the rest of your life to live with your significant other like uni's three years where you just get to live with friends and other people and other students um so I just recommend kind of doing that and and like experiencing uni for what it is because you know if you stay with your significant other after uni then you could just live with them after and it'll be fine but if you happen to to live together and break up and it just becomes a whole thing and it's really stressful for like everyone around you <laughs> so I definitely would like prioritize living with with people who you're not in a relationship with but I know that's really personal and I feel like some people won't agree with that no like the flat above me there's well it's a five bedroom flat and there's a couple living there and I know my other friend she lives with her boyfriend in their shared house but then like my other friend did that and they had separate rooms even though they were together and then they broke up so for the last six months of their tenancy it was absolutely like horrific and awkward and it made things really difficult so I think that is something that you should really think about and think okay I'm at university why not live with my friends um and then after university consider that because at the end of the day you do want to spend more time with your friends and I found it lastly really nice actually then having a space that I could go to someone else's like we didn't just have to be in the one house all the time you could go to someone else's house which was a nice break and like change of scenery as well so have any of you ever had an experience of needing to replace a housemate whether that was during your tenancy or at the end of the tenancy if you were staying on and just needed to find someone else or two to live with has anyone had that experience um I've had that experience twice actually um so to just give you like a brief story we um we signed a house of five in our first year and in the August and we were meant to move in in the September someone said I'm really sorry I'm dropping out of uni um and we were like great we've got a spare room and no one to pay the rent so um we had to go on Facebook essentially and sort of video call loads of people and like basically advertise the room and decide who we wanted in it before they decided they wanted to live with a different person that experience was very stressful but yeah so we did that and we we had a guy move in he was a master's student we were all second year so it was maybe like a bit of a strange situation but it was we were on a time crunch and we you know and we all got on it was fine and then my second experience was polar opposite it was super duper easy we decided to re-sign our house from second year onto third year um so this master's guy was moving out and we were like again we've got a spare room um but we actually had a friend from first year who was going to be on his own in third year we said move in with us and he was like yes please and we were like easy peasy sorted so um I guess it just depends if you've got that notice period to sort of make the decision um but yeah it can be completely different for everyone and you can make new friends from it or you know solidify old friendships so it's definitely you know not something to be worried about yeah like I mentioned earlier so when I signed this house there was three of us and then the guy we were living with he decided to drop out of uni and just carried on like working full-time and then it got to Christmas and he was like I'm losing money rather than saving it because Bristol is just incredibly expensive um so it kind of got to that point where it was just early December he was like I'm moving out in two weeks and I was like this is the sort of time where people are looking for their houses for next year not many people are looking for a house the last six months unless you're like an international student coming over to do a different term or whatever so it was a bit of a stress we like interviewed interviewed like three people um one girl we really liked and then her circumstances changed the second girl like we just didn't gel with as such and then obviously we met our current housemate um but I would say it's really important as well before you even sign a place even if you're like best friends with everyone 
do check the tenancy agreement because you want to make sure that if someone, for instance, did move out, you're not going to be liable for paying their rent until you find a replacement. Whereas in our situation with contracts and Christmas and everything, it meant our old housemate, he had to pay rent still for the two weeks where there was no one living in this property um, because both me and my house mate who was staying on obviously we said we shouldn't be liable for that and our contract said that as well so do check things like that before you do sign a tenancy agreement um, and also have a discussion about what's going to happen with the bills as well so when thinking about looking for your housemates where do you think some students might look if they don't already know people that they're going to live with Facebook <laughs> it was like a really good one I think that's where most people kind of go um is I know at Bristol and I'm like 100% sure basically every other uni has it but there's just Facebook pages that are like oh like uni student house mate finder or just like stuff like that and people go on there and post all the time um if they need anyone I think that's how we got a couple of people in our house as well so I kind of it was like a friend of a friend and so I like moved in with them and then they wanted kind of like a big house so we went on Facebook and like made a listing and that's kind of how we found people so I think that that's probably like a pretty big one right now yeah I agree with Facebook and that's what we used to sort of find this extra guy the first time we had to replace a housemate but um lots of people have mentioned that they've sort of just put a message in a course group chat before and been like hi you know I'm I'm in a situation where I don't really have anyone to live with at the minute is anyone else looking would anyone else be willing to like you know go for a coffee and see if we get on and see if you know living together would be something we're up for because I think you just got to sort of ask the question um, and see who else is looking because people aren't going to be walking around saying oh, I'm looking for a housemate um so yeah just going around and asking the question in the right places so if that's the course group chat society group chat um anything like that um and see who approaches you yeah I definitely think societies sports clubs course group chats it's all such a good place because so many people will be in the same boat and if you put a message in that chat and people come back to you at least even if you've never be- met them before it doesn't feel like a complete stranger because like you've got something in common or it just feels like you know a little bit about them rather than fully just a name and a profile picture on Facebook yeah for sure I think Facebook even though like it's not as popular as other social medias I think the fact that it has like groups that's make that makes it so easy to use um the other options you can have obviously are I know Bristol has it a kind of like a notice board where you can actually advertise that you're looking for housemates or you can advertise that you're looking for a room um and you can literally put on there like either we're a group looking for someone or I'm an individual person looking for a group or whatever um and that's really great because it's like university wide as well so there's a chance you'll like meet people you've never even met before and the other thing you can do like we have our own SU letting agent and if you went to them and said you were looking for that they can help you we have like finding housemates events and I've seen also like a lot of accommodation providers are also starting to do that including us so here at accommodation for students we have just launched our new website student housemates and on here you can either advertise as a solo person that you're looking for a spare room or you can advertise that you have a spare room in your house and I think this is great but what does everyone else think like why do you think students should make use of this and what's kind of the advice advantages of now being able to have this free platform I think it kind of lets you like if you're if let's just say you're looking for like a spare room um it kind of lets you know from the like beginning what the room's going to be like what it looks like price like that you can include um like all the electricity and the bills and stuff uh, so you just know what you'll be paying up front versus like if you're on Facebook who kind of are just like openly posting like uh does someone have a room like does anyone want to live with me and then you kind of have to like decide have to have a conversation about like what your budgets are and where you want to live and this and that and then a lot of times like it doesn't even match up your preferences aren't the same but when you have a website where it's like all up there then you know from the beginning like if this is something that would work for you before you even reach out and like start the conversation so I think it'll save time and then I think well like both Sophia and Rhiannon, and like if you have a spare room it just makes it a lot easier as well because you can just put it up there yeah I basically agree of everything Anna said like when I was advertising a room on Facebook like I just didn't really know what to include in the advert so I was sort of like uh here's a photo and it costs this much and it's on this street and that's it like and people were messaging me constantly like, oh can you tell me about x y and z and I'm like I didn't even think to include that in the ad so like people were saying oh can I have a floor plan is it double glazed like um what's 
you know can I have a photo of a specific and I'm like I don't know so it was just it was a bit of a nightmare having to get back and forth with all these little details and obviously the website will prompt like little things that you should be including that you might not think to include and it really streamlines that process for you and like you know you're not constantly having to be checking your phone replying to these people quickly before they're they're snatched by a different group also looking for a housemate so it just it sort of takes out your hands a little bit takes the stress off and it means that there's that really easy communication in place um, and honestly it would have saved me a lot of stress if it had existed when I was um, looking for a housemate. I can imagine it just focuses it a lot more because on Facebook just second things will get lost or it's a lot of type it just will feel like a lot of type and images whereas the new website will feel like you're just looking for accommodation or trying to sell it rather than just like social media like it feels professional and just secure and more comfortable. I think it means you might be able to like reach out to more people as well because if you're just posting a message on Facebook it might just be like within your course or like within kind of people you already know so the website might give you a chance to meet more people who are in your city but you would like never really have known before then. Yeah and uh, it's a huge stress reliever for like students where you know there's some landlords or letting agents are like oh we can't let this house see you unless you have a whole group or things like that so it's much easier for you to just go on the website and people feel like this is a secure place to find what I'm looking for and stuff like that. Yeah and what I really like is because on Facebook if you go and put an advert up for something you get constant messages from people and sometimes they go in your spam or they're hidden so first of all you're missing out but sometimes you also get people who actually have no interest whatsoever in your property and they're just like a bot or you know just some random person and actually I think the website takes away that because everything is tracked it is monitored so it's much safer as well if something goes wrong accommodation for students are there as a support team to help you if you have any queries or questions they're again there to support you it's a whole platform as well you're not having to manage it you're literally listing your property and people can then either choose to fill out the inquiry forms get in touch with you or you can provide your own email address or phone number if you're comfortable with doing that but it just puts it all up front it's monitored it's a much safer way of doing it as well and like we said it's great because you can just include all the photos how much the deposit might be the bills the rent everything rather than being like limited on Facebook to try and making a post looking attractive and short and snappy this is a full-on dedicated website and I think if you are looking for housemates or you're looking to fill a room this is the way to go forward so does anyone have any final comments they would like to add about finding housemates, any general advice, any more experiences they've had that they would like to share? I was just thinking of going back to the replacing a housemate. When I was looking for accommodation once, there was only four of us, but we were looking for a five, we were looking at five bed houses. So it kind of links into a finding a replacement or finding an extra person and it's having them in advance. So we had advertised on Facebook that we wanted an extra person, but we were already looking at houses, but you need that person there already because houses sell so fast. So whether that's on the new website or Facebook, just trying to find that person before you look for accommodation. And um, I was going to add, like, it's also important to have communication between everyone in that, you know, we're all looking for a house and everyone should always communicate whether they're moving or there's something in their life that's going to change because some agents would not let you, you know, either move in without the last person or you just have to let people know essentially so that there can be solutions to whatever problems that come up and it's not a stress on every other person. Yeah, I completely agree with what you've just said there to me as well. And like before you move in to a house, I think it's really important to have that conversation with your flatmates where you do, like it might seem silly, but just establish those boundaries. Like what Anna was saying, like, do we share our herbs and spices and our milk? Like little things like that, just so you know. Um, and we have actually got a blog on our website, I think, um it's 65 tips for housemates or something like that um but it's just got loads of advice that we've like had from students about just how to have like a really smooth house experience and it's really worth reading Uh, and kind of on that note when you have that discussion like don't be afraid just step back if it's not the house for you and if it's like not the flatmates for you as well um if you find that they kind of want something different 
that's okay. I don't think, you know, either of them, the opinions are wrong. It just means that maybe it's not the right fit for you. So don't be like scared to, you know, voice what you want. And if that doesn't match with other people to kind of step back and evaluate and see what else you can do, because there are options, like even it is stressful. Looking for a house is stressful, especially as a student. But the conclusion is that there are options for you and you will find a house and there will be people that you can live with. So just try not to stress too much about it, but, you know, prioritize your own um, priorities, I suppose. I'd say as well, there are a lot of po- options with like different types of housing. But at the minute I'm still in like halls of residence, but there's like a flat and you can just like kind of pick who's in the flat. So you can like live with your friends and then like one or two new people if you need to fill it. Um, but it's like a really nice way if you all kind of agree, like you'll you'll want your own ensuite or something. Um it's just like an extra option. Or even if you're just like really struggling to find accommodation, then it could be a good alternative. I say linking back to what Anna said um about just prioritizing yourself. I think it is just like look after yourself and just stay as positive as you can about it because realistically it isn't going to be perfect it's student housing it isn't always great you might not get along with flatmates but everyone has issues and like I'm sure there are people out there who will have a lot worse situations than you so if you just try and always stay positive and look on the bright side it can just make your experience a lot better and in the end the likelihood is you're only there for a year So if you can just count down the days until you've got to leave or move on to a new place, it just helps a lot. Yeah, so I think the student team here today have raised some really good points. And over on accommodation for students, we've got our student blog and we've written loads of posts in the past about finding housemates or what to do if you're having some issues with your current housemates. But we've also got a new blog that's just launched, which we'll be posting monthly on over on our student housemates website. There's four or five blog posts already up on there. So if you are in that stage of looking for housemates um, at the moment or need to fill a room and want some extra advice, get over there and get reading. But thank you very much to our student team today for joining us. And we really hope we've been able to help. And if you do have any other questions or queries, you can get in touch with us through our website or on social media. Thank you. Bye.